So it's been a couple days. I've been just taking my time to do another video, but I decided I'll record another, finally. I'm probably gonna cut this part of this. So, yeah, I've just been working. I picked up a cot, finally. I picked up a little selfie stick to make my recording easier. <clears throat> I got myself a little bed going, finally. Decent bed, so I'm not hurting as much, because they just, I could not handle sleeping on just a foam pad. <laughs> And yeah, pallets. But I just, I, after trying to figure my life out, I realized that renting's probably not going to be an option. So I decided to start saving some money for the principal on a home loan. And I should be able to afford a pretty cheap home loan in my area. So while I'm doing that, I'm just salvaging wood from uh, around my job and just in the area because there's a lot of places I have it. I spent a little bit of cash, not too much, like under 30 bucks on some tools. And I've started cleaning up the uh, campsite that I'm at, so at least next to it. So, yeah, there's all this. I've completely cleaned up the garbage. Look around. Like, yeah, there's all the stuff I managed to move over that I can't get rid of the bags yet. Down the hill more, and there's more garbage that I can't get access, or can't get access to. I'm just too lazy to do it. There's the morning train. But yeah. I've just been plugging away at this stupid campsite trying to make it functional. There's my tent again. You know what I mean? If you want to see how bad it is, here's what I've gotten done so far. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how much garbage that I've cleaned up so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve bags of garbage so far. Yeah. <laughs> twelve bags of garbage is what I've gotten so far. And that's only, just visually, that's only like 20% of the garbage that's over in this one camp. And I think I said this in one of my previous videos, it's the positives and negatives of the homeless community out here. Like, there's some really decent people with some, you know, good souls and good hearts, just bad decision making and stuff like this. But um, there was a camp, and a big time camp that they cleaned up in the downtown corridor. They went in and took the trucks in there and everything. And the numbers I remember was two tons of human waste alone. And that's like human and bio waste anyways. They had to bring in special trucks and special crews. Two tons of human and bio waste. That's not including the garbage and everything else. They didn't even give the numbers on the garbage. They had to give the numbers on that because Long story short is the reason why that camp got cleaned up is because the EPA got called in. Like the homeless camp was so bad that the Environmental Protection Agency had to get involved. That's that's terrible. Anyways, yeah, like I said, so slowly but surely, I'm cleaning this site up, getting rid of all the garbage, and <clears throat> my plan here though is to take that wood right there build it up and make a shack and live out of that for a little while while I save up the money for a, uh, for a home loan but it's kind of hard to tell but right here 
is one hole that I've dug already. I've got two more over here. Those are gonna be the foundation planks, basically. I'm gonna be digging the last hole right here later. I just got tired and didn't really have a whole lot of energy to finish up the task after cleaning all that garbage up. Anyways, I'm gonna be digging those four holes and I'm gonna be borrowing this fence post that my tent's currently partially attached to. And I'm gonna, I already have all the wood pre-cut. I'm just waiting for some extra wood. Um, anyways, and a bag of cement. I'm gonna cement some four by fours in there, make a foundation post. I'm gonna put the frame together for the actual foundation of the hut when I get the cement set. Uh, put a couple of joists in. I'm, it's not gonna be like fully like house and up to code, just from what I can find, what I can use. Um, and then I have some more 2x4s lined up and I'm going to build up some walls and a small roof. And then, uh, again, just for simplicity's sake, I'm probably going to go to Home Depot, buy some Panda paper and some Flex Seal and put it over the top of that wooden shack and call it good. Maybe at most get some like fence planks because there's a bunch of oddball stuff up there. It's on sale. They have a uh, discount lumber up to 70% off just because it's oddball cuts and things that people just left behind. And within a matter of two weeks or so to a month at most, I'll have a little shack going and I can stay out here through the summer, maybe partially into the winter save up a couple of grand for my job and approach a bank and get a home loan because from what I discovered through talking with a couple of banks already as well as going through a home loan and a mortgage uh, calculator online according to my area for a $150,000 home loan it's going to be about $700-ish a month include about $150,000 for water sewer garbage and then let's just say another 150 200 bucks for oddball expenses since I live a pretty minimalist life that's that's well within my budget range uh, with how much that I work and how much that I make plus I've been approached recently by a few of the people around my job asking me if I'm willing to work for them so I should be pulling in some extra cash doing oddball handyman work and then I got to keep the lid closed but I may have come up on a new business venture of mine, or a passive income venture. I just may not have gotten it through legitimate means, but that's to be determined. I'll... It's not criminal, it's not selling drugs or anything, I just kind of squatted on a machine and I'm taking it over. So it's going to be one of those situations where I will ask for forgiveness later. I get in trouble, which I shouldn't get in trouble for it. Worst case scenario, I'll just have to replace the lock. But short answer is, is I'm going to have a small machine generating a small passive income, hopefully. And I'll take the money that I make from that, apply for a small business loan, and then create an LLC for that machine alone, and then just do my finances and everything through that. <laughs> Yeah, worst case scenario, I'll just use the LLC as liability shield as well, too. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know, for all the people that are saying that, just bitching and whining in my videos. I, I'm i doing stuff. I'm constantly working at something to make an income through as legitimate and honest means as possible. It's just somehow people... It's the internet. Commenters are commenters. But it's just like... You, I, I, you only see what you see. I, like I said at the start of most of these videos, this is a, di a video diary and an outlet for my stress and my anxiety. You know, half the shit that swirls around in our head isn't real. And then, what does that say about half the shit floating around on YouTube? Is that shit even real? You know, so fuck the negativity. All you're doing is giving me engagement. Every negative comment tells YouTube that my videos are worth watching. So even if you send me the most hateful crap, 
<laughs> other people are going to see it. So you're only helping me. So I'll go away at the negative uh, bullshit. But to all the co positive comments, and I'm going to start writing down the names of the list. I've gotten a lot of really deep, heartfelt comments from people, and I just want to say thank you. Like, uh, it's it's been wild uh, being out here and stressful again without getting Mister being all Mister Sad Pants. Like, I am pretty much alone. I don't have anyone to talk to most of the time, unless it's random customers and the few people that I work around. I don't have family. Like, I don't have very many friends. Have really any. I lived with the one close friend that I have and I fucked that situation up so <sighs> just the positive comments from people uh, throughout these couple of videos have been extremely extremely helpful and it's what keeps my head above water like I can't stress like how grateful I am for some of the nice things people have said and I know I'm being vague because I just don't really remember in great detail like that but uh, people have written paragraphs just telling me how much they care how much they're praying for me how much they hope i get better there's a couple of people that said they've been through the situation but i mean just some genuine heartfelt remarks there's even someone who was telling me about how their family's going through some uh just deep medical problems that i couldn't even comprehend having to deal with and it, you know it puts my life in perspective like yeah i'm living outside right now but i couldn't be responsible for my parents or my grandparents in the situation that that person's in and it's just humbling and as a side note it's also happens to be one of my deepest fears without getting too deep i am probably on the autism spectrum or something to that effect I have some kind of social processing disorder but I'm also hyper intelligent highly literate highly verbal and so it kind of messes with my ability to get services mental health services at least through state insurance and whatnot everyone keeps saying you know fucking universal healthcare helps no people like me are the ones that end up in the cracks anyways um I'm hyper intelligent and to no use, honestly, but it's and I've been like this since I was a kid. It's it's just it's it's terrifying to think that with as a high uh, aware as I am, that one day that'll be gone, and worse, someone else will have to care for me. That scares the fuck out of me. Because I, I have been absurdly aware of my situation and uh, what's been going on around me most of my life since I was real, real, real young. Uh, like even so, uh, for example, like I've had a college level reading since I was in like fourth or fifth grade and reading and writing are some of the things I excel at. When I took my GED test in 2012, it was the end of that series because they go in decades. So it was 2002, 2012 series. I scored an 800 out of 800, which is a perfect score. And that uh, does, doesn't happen. It just, it doesn't happen. And I talked to a couple of GED examiners and they've never seen perfect scores in all the time that they've been doing it and from a little bit of research that I've done because you can't get clean answers on this I'm basically in the top 1% of scores and on another one of my tests I got a 790 which is like one or two points off of a perfect score as well so like because of those two tests on my GED I'm in like the top 20 or 30 percent of scores overall like my test has thrown the curve in certain areas completely and this has been a problem my whole life and it's it's kind of what's wrong with the public education system we're gonna go into a small rant about this but um public education tends to roll off of uh groups in whole numbers and so kids like me tend to really screw those uh, statistics up a lot of them are based off of standardized testing. Uh, they get a rough idea of kids' educational level, and then through a roundabout way, that's how they get their federal funding and so on and so forth. Um, but every time I tested in these schools, I threw the freaking curve. I always blew the tests out with the, as high a marks as I would get. 
And so I was able to effectively go all through school without ever doing any work. And I cannot stress that enough. I didn't do any classwork. I didn't do any homework. I didn't really participate in school whatsoever. And I was passed along because of a mix of three big issues. My intelligence, my behavioral problems, and my home life. The schools were hyper aware that my mom was strung out and on drugs my whole life and just gave, basically pitied me. And they could see how smart I was. And so there really was no point in trying to educate me. So they just let me do what I want. Whatever work I did, I just did. Because I felt like it. And it was like that all the way through middle school too. Like I was having uh, problems getting along and they would uh, just pass me along or just move me along to not have to deal with me. And again, anytime they wanted to question whether or not I was intelligent enough, I would take the test, pass, and whatever. So like I said, due to these three circumstances, I just got moved all the way along until high school. And when high school came around is when I was actually somewhat held accountable for my um, my educational output, I guess would be the proper way to explain it. So same thing, I went with the same attitude all through high school. I just did whatever classes I wanted to and skipped whatever classes I didn't want to go to. And I showed up every once in a while just to hang out with friends, certain classes, whatever. It's general idea of what I was doing. But I left high school with three and a half credits. Man, I don't know how other schools do this throughout the U.S. And I definitely know it doesn't apply U.K. But your graduation is dependent on this credit system. You have to have like 26 or some odd credits over a course of four years of high school. Uh, uh, primary, whatever. Anyways. Um, so... Uh, and then the, the way it's calculated in my school district is a little bit funny. Like, you have to have so many credits in, like, English. You have to have so many credits in math. You have to have so many credits in uh, physical education. So many credits in a foreign language. And then, like, so many credits. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, I left that school with three and a half credits. Oh, yeah, and so uh, certain classes, depending on the length of them and so on and so forth, they're either a, whole, a half a credit all the way up to a credit and a half. So, like, a lot of the electives were half a credit. And the electives are classes you can take for fun. Would that be, like, shop or art? Uh, that school had a film studio, so we could do video uh, editing and whatnot. That's where I got to start in all this. Um, and just, like, IT classes and so on and so forth. Uh, swimming was an elective as well. So a lot of the base electives got you half a credit. Uh, swimming was the exception. It got you a full credit because it was an elective physical class. So they decided, hey, you get a twofer. Anyway, so I left high school with um, three and a half credits. And those three and a half credits were earned through art, video production. <laughs> um, I, I did my Digitools class, which is your computer literacy. It, it's basically more my version of typing class. And I, you know, again, like all those computer classes that people have taken to learn how to use computers before, it was ubiquitous. And kids were born with computers in their fucking hands. Anyways, um, what I say? Art, video production, digitals, swimming, lifeguard training. And then like one other oddball elective that I've taken. But that's, that's where I've gotten all my high school credits from. I didn't take any of the actual educational courses. I didn't bother. Because again, like every time I did, I passed. And so I just, I don't know. There's just, it's its like Rick said, there's just school's not for smart people. And I didn't belong and I didn't fit in. And so I eventually dropped out after just stopped going for days on end. I just, I just, I just dropped out. And so I kind of just dicked off for a couple of years, got the mother of my children, the love of my life pregnant, and decided I was going to try to be a man. I failed pretty fucking miserably, but I tried. I didn't just fuck off at first. That's a whole other story. Um, that's when the first stint of my homelessness began. But um, I tried to be a good father. I tried to be a good man. I just couldn't get the shit together right. I couldn't make the right choices. But, like I said, I'm going on almost 20 minutes now. That's going to be for another day. But I'm going to get ready, go get some coffee, 
and get ready for work and get it started up. I'll talk to y'all another time. Until then, 